So here I am in Micro Center, a place where if you have a, a computer and you do any level of uh, PC gaming, you're pretty much going to end up here sooner or later. Um, so uh, I'm waiting for them to open. They open in a couple of minutes. Right now it's 10:38, uh, but because of coronavirus, we don't open until what is it? 11 a.m. Monday through Saturday. You gotta obviously have your mask on. It's like right now, I'm looking in there, they're having their team meeting. So everybody's uh, getting ready for the customers to come in. So basically I'm here because I wanna buy the uh, Logitech Pro rudder pedals, which are $170. So the thing about it is you have to kind of treat your um, PC peripherals, you have to treat them like they're an investment, like $170 for some damn pedals. Most people would be like, ah, that's crazy. That's too much. I would never spend that kind of money. Or buy the Thrustmasters. You can get all three parts for $300. The thing about it is I like having the best. And the mere fact that I kept thinking about getting it, it's the same reason why I bought a 2080 Ti instead of getting a 2080 or 2080 Super. The last thing I want is to be fantasizing constantly about buying something that I wanted, but I didn't buy when I had the chance and I spent my money on something less. It's like, when it really comes down to it, you might as well just spend the money because really it's an investment of a couple of things. Number one, it's an investment of your time. First of all, if you get what you want, you spend less time thinking about what you want. So that gives you more peace of mind. If you buy what you want the first time, you spend less money in the long run because instead of buying something cheaper and then having to go back and spend more money to buy what you really want, it's better to just buy it up front in the first place. And um, then other than that, it's like, uh, as far as an investment goes, as long as the things continue to work, even if you decide one day, it's like, yeah, I don't want this anymore. I don't need it anymore. You can always sell it on eBay. Some people sell it for parts. Some people sell it still working and they sell it with the box because I usually keep the box for certain things. But um, it's just like my SciTech X45 joystick. I uh, had those in a bin and I hadn't been playing flight sims for a while. And then I decided to get back into flight simulators. It's so much cheaper than flying in real life. Because when I go up in real life, you spend like $200, $300 an hour. And uh, ground school and uh, learning the learning curve, that costs you like $500 for a set of classes. So flight sims are actually a lot cheaper when you really think about it. And it's funny because most of the professional pilots in the uh, aviation industry, most of the uh, former Navy, former Air Force, those guys are spending top dollar on flight simulators because they don't want to lose the skill that they have and they want to enjoy it at home. And some of these guys have basements and they got cockpits and shit built and everything. Me, I'm just I'm just sitting on my desktop and just using it like it's a video game. But uh, it's still a lot of fun and it's also time consuming, especially when you consider I don't have to go back to my office for the next four months. And I'm, you know, it's like I got nothing else to do. So day trading and flight simulators, that's, that's what I occupy my time with. Know, because there's really nothing else to do right now. I know the economy is getting ready to open back up and those stocks that I had you purchase are going to go up. Oil and gas are gonna go up. Bank stocks are gonna go up. Travel is gonna be low for a while. So airlines and uh, cruise lines, I wouldn't buy into that right now. It, you're probably safer off buying banks and oil, uh, oil, big oil companies. But uh, right now that's all I've got to do is day trade and play video games. The Toyota? I got a part next to a Toyota. Come on, man. Wait, but what, what about that park right there where, where it's white? It's like, I park, oh, come on. Oh man, they got, why can't they put the cones in this handicap shit? I hate having to repark. I gotta tell you, sorry. Oh, by the way, I'm still first in line, okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm still first in line, guys. I gotta move my car. Damn, I hate having to move my car. He wants me to move my car because they're about to put cones and shit. Fuck. I had such a perfect park. I gotta move my fucking car. And I got this stupid Toyota. Got this stupid ass Toyota behind me. He says, yeah, you can park next to Toyota. It's like, I don't want to park next to a fucking Toyota. That's like, that's like having a mansion uh, and suddenly your neighborhood turns into a ghetto. It's like it brings your property value down to park next to a shitty Toyota. 
Look at this Impala. That's a nice. I, I, I love the Impala. It's a nice car, but GM fucked up by not having all wheel drive. If they had had all wheel drive, that car would have been perfect and they fucked it all up. And that's the truth. See, I hate, you know, and it sucked because I'm a GM shareholder. And, and see, I'm gonna park all the way over here where there's nobody. And sure enough, when I come out, some asshole's gonna figure out a reason to park next to me. But I'm first online, so watch this, watch this. I'm gonna walk right up to the line. I'm gonna get right back online like a boss. Watch this. Watch this. Can't say nothing, because I was first online. I was standing there, then I gotta move my car. Look at this, they're trying to clear out this entire area. It's bullshit. But anyway, GM fucked up because they made the, see, bottom line is this. If you're gonna make a, a Kano box with one of these 3.6 liter engines, make it, whoa, got some Mopar over there. So anyway, if you're gonna make one of these Econo boxes, make sure it has a powerful engine option. If it doesn't have a powerful engine option, Make sure that that shit has all wheel drive because then you could say, well, it's not that fast, but at least you could drive it in the snow. And whether you have all wheel drive or not, make sure your shit is big and spacious. If it's big and watch this, all these people on these lines. I'm gonna walk right up to the front like a boss. Good morning. Very good. So uh, yeah, always make sure that either you have all-wheel drive or that you have a fast engine option. And if you don't have either of those, make sure it's a big spacious car. Because at least, you know, that's kind of like a minivan. At least, even if it's not fast, and even if it doesn't have all-wheel drive, at least you can use it like a minivan, like that, like that one over there, that silver one. I think that's a town and country. Chrysler owns the minivan market. That's one of the reasons why I felt comfortable buying this stock. These, look at these winners. Got all these winners right here. Lined up for the opening of the door. See, I walk right up to the front like a boss. Like Rick Ross, the boss. Look at this. They're putting. I had to move my car so they could put some cones in this ugly ass Toyota. I had to move my car. But it's like, it's okay, you know, it's like, whatever, whatever. Look, at I'm parked all the way over there. Look at that big silver truck. I got the fastest car in this lot. Look at that. This lot, there's no competitors. No competitors whatsoever. I got the fastest truck up in this lot. Look at these RAV4s, the Pontiac, Aztec. And you know what's sad? A lot of people attack that Aztec, but you know what's funny? When this market moved from buying cars to move buying crossovers, the Pontiac Aztec looks like a regular car now, doesn't it? That's a, that's a Pontiac Aztec. Everybody who I've ever known who had a Pontiac Aztec loves their car. Why is that? Well, it's because when you compare it to what's on the market now, it's just another crossover. Everybody's buying a freaking crossover like this. What, what makes that Aztec any less good than this boring, ugly ass Kia Sorento or whatever it is. It's like nothing. That Aztec was a forward looking vehicle right before GM got hit with bankruptcy in 2008 and decided that, you know, we got to drop Pontiac, you know? And they also dropped Saab. Saabs were ugly. I never liked Saabs. But when you really think about it, it's just, it fits into what I'm saying. If you buy, if you're making a car in America, Make sure that shit has all-wheel drive. And if it doesn't have all-wheel drive, make sure it's fast. And make sure it has like a V8 with rear-wheel drive. And if it doesn't have that, make sure it's big and spacious, just like this Pontiac Aztec. Because at the very least, you can always say, well, it may not be very fast, but you can drive it in the snow, even with a shitty four-cylinder or a shitty V6 engine. But you can fit a family in it even if it's not fast and you can't drive it in the snow. You can have a front wheel drive car on stilts. And it's like, when you really think about what I'm saying, it makes perfect sense. And that's the reason why the crossover market's on fire. It's just like this ugly ass Toyota right here. It's not big, it's not fast, but you can get it with all wheel drive and you could fit a family of four into it. A family of four midgets. See? It makes perfect sense. Like, a lot of the things I say are harsh. 
necessarily look at the Trump finger. Harsh, but truthful. Look at this car right here. Another one of them boring ass crossovers. Honda Pilot coming up here, sneaking up here all discreet and everything. Yeah, it's like you have a choice. You can either have all wheel drive, you can be big, you can be fast, or you can be all three. You know? There's like, there's like three options. Fast, cheap, and reliable. You can only pick two out of the three. Okay, they're putting out the curbside pickups. I'm going in. I'm going in. They got the curbside pickup right here. Yeah, they should be opening the door. What time is it? Should be opening the door. 10 minutes. Fuck. See, this is why you got I do everything early. You know what they say? The early bird murders the worm. That's why all the rest of these guys are sitting back here waiting to get in. But I'm in the front of the line. I'm full of looking at full of thinking. This lady up in here, the seat in us. She's what? What's she picking up? She's picking up a Bitcoin miner for her son Bradley. She's getting her Bitcoin miner because Bradley forced her to come here to buy a Bitcoin miner for her his birthday. That's why she's here. Yeah, so that's the reason why they need to read a book so you can go to stupid cones. All right, let's get the show on the road. Okay, this just keeps getting better and better. So the line keeps getting bigger and bigger. And I got the cash truck pulls up. This is the money truck. You know that movie with Wesley Snipes and Woody Harrelson, Money Train? Well, this is kind of like the money train, except it's the money truck. This guy's a badass right here. He got the mask on and everything. How do you know that's really him? We got the manager right here. This is my man right here, Scott. Scott's cool. This is a uh, micro center. That's Scott right there. Scott's the coolest manager there is. I love Scott. Awesome guy. Got the money truck. So don't fuck with the money truck. You do not fuck with the money truck. It's just like with that movie. Yo, Money Train was a good movie. You remember, whatever happened to Wesley Snipes? I mean, why the fuck did he have to stop paying his goddamn taxes? Wesley Snipes has some of the best movies ever made. I mean, he's got Blade, Passenger 57, Money Train. I mean, those, those three movies alone, I mean, that dude, that dude was killing it. The 90s, but Wesley Snipes owned the fucking 90s. I mean, I, what happened? Look at this. What's this, Penske? What was this? Wesley Snipes owned the 90s. It's like, what happened? Money Train was an awesome movie. All right, it's now 10.59, so they should be opening up right about now. Let's get this show on the road. Got purchases to make. Hello. Oh, they got a, what is it? They got a fucking doctor up front? What is this? Hey, Scott. Hey. How's it going? How's it going? How are you? Very good. Good. We're allowed to go in? Yeah, just checking with him first. Sure. All right. Have you been in close proximity to a suspected or confirmed case? No. Have you come into contact? No. Have you traveled internationally? No. Have you been on a cruise? No. Have you experienced any flu like snow? You Thank you. All right. What's going on, Doc? Okay. Ooh, these are on sale. It's my monitor right there. Oh, no, 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 no. This is the new one. Oh, shit. That's the new one. Okay. Micro Center is such a different place under quarantine, isn't it? Okay, let's get this show on the road. Let's see if they got anything cool, new, any new cool stuff. And then I'll go pick up my product and be out. Oh, all these stupid blue lines, man. I swear to God, I should have bought stock in blue tape. What's up, guys? And the Mac Pro right there. 
Um, I came to buy the Logitech Pro pedals, but first I wanted to see what you guys got as far as new computers. I just want to see if there's anything interesting. That'd be a Jack and Squat. What'd you say? That'd be a Jack and Squat. Jack and what? Jack and Squat. What's that? <laughs> you got nothing. Oh, nothing? Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> yeah, I just started playing DCS. You know DCS? Digital Combat Simulator? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got to get those pedals. Oh, the new Omen stuff, cool. All right. All right, let's see. What do I got? Hey, what's up, homie? Hello, how are you doing? I know what I got to get. I'm just taking a look at the new stuff. You got like these new monitors. Oh, shit. $1,000 for a 49 inch, what is this, 1440p monitor. Ooh. And this is the new Alienware monitor. The Alienware Aurora. I don't like the Aurora because the uh, case is too small. I like having the Area 51. It's nice shit. Okay. So the monitor is $1,000. This is this is the monitor I have. So they're selling that for $800. Wow, there's a lot of heat coming out the top of that damn thing. And this is the new monitor. Ah, it's nice. Okay. Oh, look at that Dell one. Holy shit. See, it's monitor. See, the thing about it is I may upgrade my monitor simply because I have a family member who would love to have an ultra wide like the one I got right here. But that one right there, that's the new one. I might get that. I like that shit. And it's less than $1,000. But if I get that, I'm going to have to stop spending all my fucking YouTube money on stocks. Yeah, here it is right here. That's the one I got. I have to stop spending my YouTube money on stocks. Okay, I guess that's enough dilly dallying around. Let's go get, let's go get my uh... shit. Oh, they got the chairs out here. Well, I already got a chair. Oh, and see, this is one of those pilot setups that they're trying to sell. Three ninety nine. Hmm. Is a, man, Micro Center is so cool. All right, so now I just gotta find them. Got the uh, 3D painter shit, 3D printer. All right, let's find them. I usually keep them right around here somewhere. Should be here somewhere. Oh yeah. <laughs> there you go. Make your controllers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shit. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Do you know where you keep that? Those uh, Logitech uh, Flight Pro pedals? Um, they should be uh, an eleven on the top. Eleven. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, this is the top. This is shit. Like, if you want to, if you want to, like, I, in the video that I made, I was flying a Cessna 172 Skyhawk, right? So, if you're flying a Cessna 172, this is the flight control system you want to have. This is the flight yoke system. And this is $170. But you can't just get that. You got to get these. These are these Logitech Pro pedals. And they're charging $170 for just the fucking pedals. Oh, and these are the other things that you can get. So, uh, th this is the um, one of the better sellers. This is the Thrustmaster 16,000. And this comes, if you buy it for $270, it comes with its own set of pedals. But see, for these people who are playing Elite Dangerous, and they're playing Star Citizen, they're gonna want the dual stick like this and the pedals, because the thing about it is when you're flying a spaceship, you have uh, six degrees of freedom because you're flying a three-dimensional fighter. Now this is the updated SciTech model, something like what I have. This is the X-52. It's designed after the F-16's HOTAS system. This is $200. That's two hundred dollars. Now my Satec X forty five is doing really well. 
but a lot of these uh, pilots, well, you know, pilots, former pilots, and people who are training to be pilots, they can get these MFDs, and these MFDs basically allow you to train to use a radar, and they allow you to train to use a uh, radio, and this is a multifunction display. Now these are $114. So basically, when you, I might consider getting these too, but I see these on eBay, and they're a little cheaper. I actually want these, but um, I'm gonna get those when I feel I need them, because I really don't think I need them. The, I mean, when you buy the pro flight stuff, when you buy this pro flight stuff, you're really getting that because you really are either a training pilot or you are uh, constantly, you know, because here's the thing, one thing you gotta understand, let me tell you something. When you buy stuff like this, a lot of people don't understand. If you have a CPA, you can use this stuff for continuing education. If you wanna go to flight school, flight school is considered school. You can use this stuff and you can get tax cuts for continued education, it's crazy. Like my father, when he started buying guns, what he did was he took one of those, uh, what is it called, um, concealed carrier classes and that was considered continuing education. These are the Thrustmaster pedals so that if you buy this joystick right here and you get these Thrustmasters, these pedals right here are the ones that are specifically designed for this system right here. So when you get these two, uh -oh. yeah, when you get these two right here, these two allow you uh, to get the whole setup. Like I, I saw this online, it was $260 at Best Buy, but well, um, what is it called? Micro Center sells 137 plus 114. So basically Best Buy kind of had it marked at about the same thing because they were selling for 259. This is what I came for. Okay, and that's about it. So everything else, everything else I pretty much have. Okay. All right, so I think I got everything else I need. Yeah, and see, this is another one of the desk setups right there. So they got some good, man, I tell you, whether you like racing simulators, cause I'm not, my thing is I race in real fucking life, but uh, whether you like racing sims or you like flight sims, or you play those farm simulators, which I totally don't understand. It's like, they got something for everybody. Good stuff. Uh, it's a cherry brown, right? Yeah, and I have, I have raisin now. I like raisin, but you know, that better now. Hmm, let me see about the keyboard. I can, I can see that I got a really just like, because sometimes one company is cheaper than the other one. Hmm. Yeah, so it's like, it's I will say this, that little hand pad keyboard is actually pretty cool. Yeah, but that's $80, and the only thing I can use that for is binding simple functions, which is like two. I think that doesn't make sense. Play Advanced, they got advanced gaming mouses here. The G604. I, I like my Alienware mice. I, I really, like a lot of people hate Dell. And I, and I understand the reason why. The reason why they hate Dell so much is because Dell makes a good product with Alienware stuff. They charge you a lot of money for it. But the thing that these people want is they want to build their own because then they can brag about what they have. See, if you build a computer, you get to brag about it. But if you bought a computer that's already built and everybody buys that same computer and everybody has the exact same thing, you really can't brag about it because yours is the same as this. It's like buying an iPhone. People who have iPhones, they don't brag to each other about having an iPhone, but people who buy that Galaxy shit and the fucking stupid Androids, all they do is they, they gotta go through a whole list and tell you everything about it, shit that you don't give a fuck about. And that's just a reality. And me personally, I like, I just like having well-made stuff with warranties. Like these Alienware mice. If my mouse ever broke, I would buy one of these right here. Those are some good mice. Hmm. Hmm. All right. I think I got everything I need. See it there? Yeah, this is a thousand dollars. 
So what I would do is I'd give my mom or somebody else, I'd give her my monitor and then just buy a new one. But I'm not ready to upgrade yet because the thing about it is they got DDR5 memory coming. They got, uh, what is it called? They got um, the new Intel 10th generation stuff coming. So it's like, I'm not ready to upgrade just yet. But if I was to build a cockpit in my basement, I'm using a 50 inch television because a 50 inch television is only like $300. Yeah, I got them. You ever play DCS? It's free. To, you get you can buy new planes, but DCS is free now. Like on Steam, and then they have Steam sales. Yeah, I haven't really uh, done flight sims in a long time. Yeah, no, I love them. I fly in real life, and this is just cheaper. Yeah. Not you and I. So, were you able to find it? Right there? Yeah, so, okay, flight so, rudder pedals. Okay, so this is good. See, uh, I already got the stick. I got the stick. I got the no, whole no, setup. No, 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 no. Hey, do me a favor. Just try and hold it by this side because, like, putting too much strain on it might trigger the alarm and, you know, I don't want to fall. Okay. Sure. Gotcha. Yeah, I got it. Good stuff right here. Good. All right. Come on, there's tape all over the bottom. Okay, I think I'm done. I got what I need. I love my monitor. I love my monitor. I absolutely love my monitor and I love my speakers. Let me tell you something, if you're looking for a chair, $200 is about what you should pay for it. And just make sure that the thing that you focus on is its capacity. There are some that have upgraded metal bases and the upgraded metal bases can withstand like up to like 400 pounds. Regardless what you weigh, if you buy one that can withstand more, that allows you to uh, get more life out of it. It also, cause a lot of people slouch in their chairs and they lean down in their chairs and everything. So you gotta make sure that you have a chair that can support the abuse weight. It's not just about the weight, it's about the stress. And you wanna be able to support the stress. Okay, I guess there's social distancing steps here. Uh, this shit right here, let me stand on there. Okay. All right, and then we're gonna be on our way out of here. Cool. America is never gonna be the same after this shit. America is never gonna be the same. You got all these stupid ass Trump supporters online and I gotta argue with these stupid motherfuckers about how dangerous the virus is. And you gotta argue with them about how many people have died because of it. It's a pain in the ass. These people are so fucking dumb. How's everything going? I can see business ain't getting hurt too bad, eh? No, we've been, we've been constantly busy. There's nothing else to do except I'm sitting home playing, learning to fly shit. <laughs> it's great, you know? Uh, please, I bought I bought a steering wheel for my racing setup. I set the what game do you play? I play I play Forza, and I've been playing uh, truck simulators. Truck simulators. Okay. Do you have the gear shifter and all? Yeah, that? No, not yet. I oh, okay. Got, I, I started off simple, but eventually I'll get there. Yeah, no, because I, I fly uh, from Farmingdale Airport, but that's really expensive because you got to pay like three or four hundred dollars an hour. Dep or it depends on the lesson, but it, it's expensive. It's really expensive. But uh, yeah, so this is cheaper. DCS, it's free. You download it from Steam. It's a lot cheaper. There you go. Yeah, it's fun too. Good. Yeah, you got something to pass time Yep. Gotta occupy my mind for the next five months. Yeah, how about that? Five months. To tell you that I'm sitting at home day trading stock, banks, oil, all uh, that. And then playing games, and that's it. The whole day, the whole day just goes. It's ridiculous. All right. Hi. 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 Okay, so I got my pro pedals. 
Got the BMW right here. It's an M4. Good luck to your engine. I hope it doesn't burn out like everybody else's. Got the Tesla Model 3 right here that don't use no gas. Tesla Model 3. No gas. Making my Tesla stock great again. Meanwhile, we got this Hyundai Sonata, which costs half as much and has more features. I, I've never talked bad about the Sonata. I actually like the Sonata. I wish that it had like the type of engine where you could actually do modifications on it. Like if I wanted to buy a Sonata and put like two turbos in the shit, I wish you could do that, but you can't do that. Those cars are boring. You can't do shit with these horrible RAV4s and these stupid CRVs. You can't do anything with those. It's like, if you want to have a car where you can do something with it, you got to get yourself Mopar. During the end of the world, Mopar will still exist. Even those horrible, boring Alfa Romeos right there. All right, let's see. The oh, fuck? You gotta come all the way over here? Why are you all the way over here? Get lost. Nobody cares about no BMW. If I wanted a BMW, I'd have one. Get that piece of shit on lease. Take it back after two years. There's a chick right here with this infinity wagon and she's up there trying to like race me like she was like getting real aggressive all up on me. There's this chick right here getting all aggressive on me trying to race me and the problem is I'm stuck kind of stupid van. This white van speaker scam. Look at this shit. Look at this. Got another infinity stupid Q4. All these goddamn infinities. So now I got to get over. Let's get over real quick. No, sorry, honey, you stay back there. Get up, get up here, get up here, get up here with this Hemi. Get up there with that Hemi. What you got? Where your affinity at? Get up there with that Hemi. See, I don't, I don't need racing simulators like, uh, what's his name? Like uh, the manager. See, he likes Forza. I hate Forza, and the reason why is because they make the uh, SRT products drive horribly, and they make it seem like only the BMWs and only the Corvette and only like those top name cars. They make it seem like those are the only cars that can handle. It's like these cars handle just fine. It's like I don't need no race simulator. I got that shit in real life. Got these SRTs driving around a 5,000 pound monster truck that does fucking 170 miles an hour. Look at that shit. Look at that shit. Out handling goddamn Ford Fusions. Look at that shit. What you got? What you got? Where's your Hemi? You freaking Honda. I got some sport brakes and everything. Look at that shit. Look at this. Got this stupid, this green, handy, capable truck here slowing me down. Yeah. See, I don't need, I don't play racing simulators. Uh, I just don't. And if I did, like, you know, they'd expect you, you gotta go all out and get the the manual and the clutch pedal kit that they got at the store. It's like, I ain't buying that stuff. <laughs> it's like, that's not fun. It's like, if I wanna race, I race in real life. Get me one of the Mopars. Mopar or no car. Okay, so first of all, let's inspect our little installation area. So that's my 34-inch uh, monitor. Now, as I was saying, if I was going to go with one of those uh, ProFlight setups that a lot of the pilots are getting now for Cessna ProFlight and also the people who are buying into Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, first of all, there's no real way to make an absolute cockpit because Cessna is a really tight aircraft and most aircraft cockpits are actually really, really tight. So like the video, if you look on my main page, the video that you see me in, it was like me and my CFI, we're sitting with my arm in front of him all over his body and everything. But he understood that because he was a small guy. I think he only weighed like 125 pounds. So um, bottom line is this is my uh, area. So I got the Area 51. If you're playing these flight simulators now, Microsoft, they demand a lot more, uh, how should I say, uh, they demand a lot more CPU processing power now. So if you're, if you're gonna, um, get a CPU, like if you're planning on building yourself a system, you're gonna either wanna have a core i9-9900K or something better. But right now, if you get a 9900K, you're doing just fine. And that's a really powerful processor. 
Um, so that's my uh, flight seat right there. And as you can see, my flight seat. And then I've got my uh, regular seat right here because the thing about it is um, these flight chairs, just like you see in the store, those things can kind of be annoying on your lower back, your lumbar. And even in real life, airplane seats are nowhere near as cushy as these things are. Like you don't get back pillows and shit when you're flying an airplane. But it's like some of that stuff you got to basically bring with you. <laughs> but um, I have the SciTech X45 joystick for my flight sims, as you can see. So I got the HOTAS setup, just like the one that you saw in the store. I usually, when I'm making videos, I usually use my Alienware AW988 headphones. So I was charging them. Let me disconnect. So I got my headphones right there. Some of you guys got motion trackers for your head. I don't have that yet. I haven't decided whether or not I would ever, in, you know, get like one of those uh, motion tracker systems. I, I, I have an I have a HTC Vive, but I really don't use it. Now, as far as sound quality, I use the Eclipse Pro Media 2.1 sound system. So you got one speaker right there, one speaker over there. Um, those clips are a good system, really good system. So as you also know, I got the G Force. Uh, RTX 2080 Ti um, put in my uh, main computer right there. My other computer, I use that uh, to help drive uh, that television right there when I want to do uh, video editing or something or if I'm watching something that's on the computer, I usually use that computer down there for that. So let's uh, get this uh, Logitech Pro Pedals. Let's get this set up. So as you can see, Pro Pedals designed specifically for the Cessna Pro Flight system, which you saw in the store, but you can use them for just about any flight simulator. You can use them in conjunction with just about any joystick. Most guys are getting the uh, Warthog A10 Thunderbolt design war uh, joystick, um, but pe that's really expensive. That joystick's like $500, and it only is designed specifically for like the Warthog and the uh, F18. So that wasn't my first choice. This stick right here is really designed after the F-16. However, with its bright colors and its orange hats and all that stuff, it's really, they, they know they're making a gaming product. I think the only company that you can really go to where you get a, a, a HOTAS system that really looks extremely professional is uh, Verpal. Verpal makes some good joysticks and they also make good throttles that are like, you know, one-to-one -one designs with the actual fighters and everything. But um, I'm not spending I'm not spending thousands of dollars on this stuff. SciTech, Logitech, they have created a pretty good, inexpensive way for just about anybody to get in on flight simulators, especially like with that pro flight simulator for the Cessnas. You can simulate a small plane. You can simulate a jumbo jet with those. But I've noticed that new jumbo jets like the A380, they have a side stick just like this. They don't really use... Um, they don't really use, uh, what is it called, um, the, the yoke anymore because the jumbo jets are basically big flying computers. So they, uh, they can use a regular stick just like this and they can even use a regular throttle. The A380 Airbus and I believe the A330, they have side sticks. They don't even have flight yokes in the middle anymore. I, I think that makes it so the cockpit is more spacious for the pilots. So let's get this bad boy right here set main up. thing that people who uh, learn when they start flying is that airplanes aren't, when you're on the ground, airplanes aren't really controlled so much with the uh, stick. Airplanes are controlled with your toes. The rudder pedals also control the, uh, the uh, wheels for an airplane. So when you're flying around, one of the first things you learn is taxiing. And when I was in that video that I made and we were taxiing the plane, that was the thing that I had to learn how to taxi using my toes. So these Pro Flight pedals come with an axis for your toes specifically. It looks like they have a, a replacement foot pad. These are larger than the other ones that I've seen. Now this has a base that does not expand. And I guess what they're trying to do is they're trying to simulate the fact that when you're in an airplane, there's a very limited amount of space. You don't get to create more space. So when you're sitting there and you've got your uh, toes controlling the plane, 
and usually you're wearing shoes. When you're sitting there, you're taxiing using the throttle and you're taxiing directions using your feet. So basically it looks like, okay, so they slide back and forth and that's the dial in the middle for friction. So they slide back and forth and then they also can be tilted forward and back. You can tilt forwards and back in order to activate the brakes. So in a game like DCS, you can increase tension here. Some people like it loose. Some people want it to be stiff. In the Cessna, the Cessna 172, the pedals are a little bit closer together from what I can remember. But if you fly a Cirrus Vision jet or a Honda jet, they are designed a little bit more luxurious so that you have a little bit more space to play. Yeah, so that's uh, it's a good system and it feels high quality. Now these pedals right here, these are a separate set with a different size. So let me just show you the comparison right here. Oh, you know what these are? No, okay, I'm sorry. These pedals are not replaceable. What these are right here is a foot base. So when you stick these here, they sit there just like that. And they uh, allow you to have like, basically it's, it's, for, your, um, it's for your heels. Okay, so that's how they're supposed to be. Now, either you can put your feet all the way up where you see there's this catch right here, or you can put your feet right here and you can use that as the base. I think, I think I'm gonna fly more like this. One negative comment that I have read is that these do not come with a way to really uh, Velcro them down. So there is no real Velcro, but what there is is a double-sided tape. So you see these outlines right there? That's where the double-sided tape would go. Now, what I can say is if you have a professional setup, you can screw them down because it already has pre-drilled holes. So that's nice. But what they want you to do is they want you to take this double-sided tape. And this is a double, this is a one-sided tape that has some Velcro, right? But see, what people were saying, they were saying that they felt that this was an inadequate way to hold them still. So um, that's the one thing I could say. But however, if you're getting one of these advanced desktop setups, all you're going to do is you're going to take screws and you're going to put them here, here, and right there and right there. And then you're good. Because I, I believe that most of the pre-drilled holes for most of these setups are designed in a way where they will accept these pedals in particular. All of these parts take up a lot of space. So from Micro Center, I got this for $2. This is a USB hub man, which uh, it's USB 2.0, but all of the things that I'm hooking up to it are USB 2.0, so I'm all There good. you have it. This is my setup right here. This is my, my humble flight simulator right here. So uh, as you can see, everything's all ready. So my thing is, what I'm going to do is when I post videos of DCS, I'm just gonna put that in my gaming highlight uh, playlist because there's a large community that's growing because um, you know Steam gives DCS for free and people come on and they're looking for questions and everything. Because you know I've, I've watched some really good videos lately. Like I never expected to actually care about the TF51 Mustang. And the thing about it is because of me playing this game, all of a sudden I started going to uh, videos and watching people flying this thing. Like there's this guy named, uh, what's his name? Um, Kermit Weeks. And I was watching this guy's video and he was taking us through the entire process of starting the plane, flying the plane, landing the plane. And the amazing thing about it was You've seen the videos I've made on DCS where you have to go through these these long startup procedures. It, it was like watching him fly in this thing, I felt like I was really there. And it was actually really, really amazing that it was like I've never been in this plane particularly before. I don't even think I've seen this plane in person. 
But when you play DCS, DCS teaches you so much about what's necessary to fly one of these things until when you watch videos like this guy right here, you know, and then I've got a nice system. So, I, you know, when I'm watching them, like um, I have some good stereo speakers, it feels like you're there. the thing so dcs the community is growing there's a lot of people viewing the dcs videos so when you post a video like it automatically lets everybody know that there's a new video for dcs gaming and a lot of people you got to remember there's a lot of professional pilots who are navy pilots air force pilots who are using dcs just to keep them sharp on their skills like there's this guy right here his name is a uh, cw lemoyne and this guy right here is a youtuber just like me He's got more subscribers, but he has less views than I do. But he'll probably get as many views as I do eventually because he is an author and, um, you know, he's a pilot in this, that, and other. And I like watching this guy's uh, videos. And um, the thing about it is he himself, he plays DCS too. And um, this guy is an actual F-18, F-16 fighter pilot. And um, he's retired, and I think he... Uh, flies like um commercial now because most retirees tend to go commercial so um the thing about it is the the, the community is growing and growing and growing and it's amazing because just instantly overnight i became part of that community which is like really crazy you know it, this is so much cheaper than flying in real life because when you go up if you go like my, my people at nassau flyers here in farmingdale long island right if you go up Ground school costs you about $500. In fact, Nassau Flyers has a channel right here. Ground school is going to cost you $500, and they'll give you all of the classes um, that you'll need in order to learn. The, this is their channel right here, Nassau Flyers, right? So um, that's called Nassau Flyers. So the thing about it is they uh, have classes that are free online, and they've been doing it for like the last, well, while we're in the quarantine. And they teach you everything you need to know about pre-flight inspections and fuel management, weight management. And um, I'm, you know, I'm part of them. And the thing about it is because of quarantine and social distancing, if I wanted to, I can't fly right now. Like if I want to go fly, I can't because everything's closed. And furthermore, when you're sitting in a cockpit ne next to somebody, there's no six foot rule, you know, because you're in a cockpit. So this DCS is amazing because it's teaching you so many fundamentals. When you read the manuals, you learn a lot more. And if you're a professional or if you're planning on growing pro, it's like you learn so much so quickly until it's almost like, you know, sitting in the classes and learning it for real. The only difference is your life's not on the line, you know, because when you go up, yeah, you're gonna pay two or three hundred dollars per hour. But on top of that, your life is on the line. When you're playing one of these flight simulators, it's not like that, you know? So here's my pedals. And um, so far, I'm happy with the initial quality. They're looking great. And um, the thing about it is I'm going to obviously talk about them when I'm writing and talking about reviews for YouTube while I'm playing my games. So when I'm playing DCS, I might even buy Microsoft Flight Simulator because I have a 10 terabyte SSD. So I have plenty of space for SSDs uh, for uh, storing stuff. So uh, the thing about it is I'm all ready to go. But uh, that's my system. Just turn the light off. And that's my system. So I'm using my old Satek X45. Very good joystick. It's lasted me more than 10 years. I'd say that's a good thing. I've had that joystick probably since like the year 2000 or 1999 or something like that. Whenever it came out, that's when I bought it. But um, that's, that's my system. So uh, if you have any comments, questions, uh, feel free to ask. Keep in mind with DCS, I just started. So I'm learning a lot about it right now. There's a lot of stuff I don't know. But, um, you know, if you subscribe to my channel and you like DCS and you like seeing amateurs who have no idea what they're doing playing it, feel free to subscribe and I'll catch you in the air.